Sea stars along much of our Pacific coast are dying in great numbers in a mysterious fashion in what is being called sea star wasting syndrome. Western's own associate professor in biology, Ben Miner, has played a significant role in researching this fascinating and sad phenomenon. Sea star populations along the west coast have been suffering from a die-off that's attributed to sea star wasting syndrome. And we've seen major die-offs in the areas around Vancouver, BC, Seattle, Washington, Monterey Bay, California, and Santa Barbara, California. And in these areas, we have seen relatively um, abundant populations of, of sea stars um, uh, die. And so it's very difficult to find individuals at all at the sites that previously had um, many sea stars present there. Um, sea star wasting syndrome is a set of symptoms that, that progress um, within an indiv individual until they ultimately die. And uh, normally what happens is individuals start behaving a bit different. They'll twist their arms up or, um, or not look in the normal, or act at least in the normal behavior of, of, of sea stars that are healthy. Uh, they can sometimes look deflated, kind of look um, curled up, and then um, lesions oftentimes develop on the, the epidermis, their skin, um, which can rupture, spilling out some of their intestines and gonads, and then sometimes the arms will, will rip apart from the body. Um, and then ultimately the individual will die. Primarily what people see though at the very end of it is a very large bacterial mat that they you know, it's oftentimes you know, described as a big pile of goo and that's basically the, the tissue that has been degraded by, by bacteria. So my research primarily involves two aspects um, related to, to this problem. Um, one is surveying areas to determine where the disease is present and um, and uh, how it might how it might be moving or progressing as time goes on or disappearing um, in some cases. And then um, the other part is a set of laboratory experiments that I do, um, where we um, will put individuals that appear to be infected in with healthy individuals, and then um, and then determine whether they can transfer it among individuals or maybe put an infected water, for example, in with what appear to be healthy individuals and see if they contract it. We have no idea what it is right now, so things are, that's really cool, kind of being on the cutting edge of the research. And the stickers on each of the tanks, usually the first layer of manipulations was just sick and healthy individuals, and those are the green and red tags, and so, and the tank easy way to number each of the tanks so we know who's in what tank sort of thing. About once a week or so since they normally these organisms are intertidal so the tide comes in brings their food to them if you will um, brings that clean water in and then it goes out and it comes in and out whereas here they're in a static environment so the waste from the sea stars when they're eating the mussels that we provide for them builds up and so we change the water to make sure that that doesn't end up impacting experimental manipulations we're doing. Most of the researchers, I mean, there's an entire team, it's not just Dr. Miner, up and down the coast that's been looking at this. And so you can really help out if when you're walking down at, say, Marine Park or whatnot, and you find a star that has whitish lesions is the, usually the first sign of the condition that's really, really obvious. Um, and you do want to be careful because on the top of the star, there's a, there's a little circle. And that little circle that's naturally whitish is part of the sea star. That's, that's not a lesion. So be careful about that. And yeah, keep an open mind. Keep, keep looking. I mean, citizen science is really helping us out on this project. Feel free to talk to Dr. Miner. His email should be up on the biology department webpage. If people are interested in, in getting involved there, um, I would suggest going and looking at the um, Sea Star Wasting Syndrome webpage that the UC Santa Cruz hosts. And, um, and I think it's seastarwasting.org. It'll provide some additional information about how to get involved if, um, if you'd want to. And we have lots of citizen scientist groups that are helping out um, and trying to, trying to figure out where the disease is, how it's spreading, and, um, and and help solve the problem. 
and then I left actually the right field clothing ceremony. So I was there for about three and a half weeks, four weeks total. So uh, quite the adventure. Yeah, what an experience I've had. I oh, mean, yeah. so uh, so tell me a little bit. What's Russia like? I mean, I've never actually been to Russia other than seeing what I see well, the news. That's what I know about th it. That was my first time to Russia. Um, I'd been close to it in Prague and, and Riga, but never in Russia itself. And and obviously being in the in the center of an Olympic Games is a little mm -hmm. bit different. Uh, 